Hello and welcome to this fireside chat here at the Zero Project Conference 2022 in Vienna. And it's my very great pleasure to welcome Sarah Herlinger from Apple to join us uh, from about as far away as it's possible to be uh, on the uh, west coast in the, of the United States. Sarah, welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. And I'm so sorry I couldn't be there in person. Next time, I'm sure. Um, Sarah, to, to start us off, um, it would be really interesting. Um, how do you describe the philosophy or strategy of Apple uh, in building technology that enables people with disabilities? Oh, sure. Yeah, well, I think in terms of our uh, philosophy, you know, accessibility is really a core value for Apple. And since our inception, our goal has been to empower people with breakthrough products that change people's lives. And we do this not just for some people, we really try and do this for everyone. We believe that accessibility is a basic human right and that everyone should be treated with dignity and respect. And so how that then manifests in our strategy is that each year we continue to try and push the boundaries of innovation to create amazing features to support a wide range of user needs um, from vision to hearing to physical motor to cognitive. And, and I guess it sort of prompts the question, which is sort of why? And what motivates Apple um, to develop this strategy over what's been a number of years, really? Yeah, well, well you know, accessibility has been a part of Apple's DNA from the start. Our first accessibility team was started back in 1985, which was actually five years before the Americans with Disabilities Act came to pass. So that work was not about a regulation or someone saying you have to do that. It was really about us early on being motivated to believe that you know technology should respond to everyone's needs um, at its best it can enable everyone to be able to be more creative and collaborative and productive independent and be able to live out their dreams and that's something that we were have been passionate for decades about ensuring is in our products we do this a lot through that uh the mantra of the disability community of nothing about us without us you know, we've always believed it's important to work with members of the disability community, starting with who we hire within our own company to help us design these features and ensuring that people who um, use them are the, the people who were involved in that design process. But really, it's just been about trying to make sure that everybody who wants to use Apple technology has the power to do so. And I mean, there's such a wide range of Apple products available to us now on the market. And many of the sort of technologies and features and functions that you're talking spread across those uh, different products. But what excites you uh, about the approach and the products that Apple are producing? Yeah, uh, well, gosh, there are a lot of things that excite me about um, the work that we're doing. I think, you know, one of them is that we we're constantly trying to um, to make sure that our communities have the same amazing experience that everyone else does when they use our technology. And that that sort of falls into two categories. One thing is our team is always relentlessly working to make sure that everything that every other engineer at Apple builds is built to be accessible. So, Regardless of what product you use, if there are accessibility features that you know and love and rely on, um, we really work to make sure that those are available across all of our products so that um, any product that you pick up, you're able to turn on the accessibility features you need, and then the entire operating system is available to you. But the other thing that we're really excited about is how because we are a consumer products company and because we have so many engineers working on such cutting edge technology across the board. So whether that be in hardware or software, um, that they're really looking at what's the latest and greatest and how do we build that into our products, that our team can take all of those great tools out there and the knowledge of all of those people and use them to build really cool features specifically for our communities. So as an example of that, if you think about a, a feature like people detection, um, people detection was built into Magnifier in iOS 14, 
and it's a feature to support the blind community in uh, understanding where people are around them. Um, and we actually started this feature based on the, the request of one of our engineers who is blind, who said that when he was in uh, just in a line anywhere, whether that be the grocery store, waiting to get into a venue, whatever it might be, that he struggled with knowing when the person in front of him moved. So we started looking at LiDAR technology, which is something that's built into the pro models of our iPhones and our iPads um, as a, a tool to be able to support that. So we used actually a lot of, of cool technology from um, uh, a feature called people, or, uh, people Occlusion in ARKit to that, uh, which is more the software side, to LiDAR in the camera, to our machine learning models to build out a way in which um, it would understand where people are in proximity to you and be able to let you know via a range of, of different ways, including voiceover or haptics or things like that. And when suddenly we ended up in the situation we're in right now with COVID, understanding where people are in proximity to you suddenly became so much more important as social distancing was a part of our lives. And so um, we were able to fast track that feature and get it out so that uh, we could assist the blind community in social distancing during this unprecedented time. And that to me is a great example of really what does excite us, you know, when we're able to look at what's, what's at our, our fingertips in our own technology and use that to the benefit of our, our communities in completely new and innovative ways that no one else has even thought of. And, and that's certainly something we've been discussing here at the Zero Project, which is these features are developed, but sometimes we don't, can't always anticipate how they're going to be used until they're being used in that way. And that shapes design for the future as well. And, and, and I was thinking, I, when you and I were sorting, discussing this, um, I think um, my first Apple product was a, an iPod uh, classic with 160 gigabytes of music on it. And over the years, I've then got a, in my drawer an, an Apple, Apple phone, iPhone 3G and iPads and so on. And it just made me realize that this process has been going on for a number of years. And, and the process and the products that Apple have produced have had a significant influence. Um, and what do you think the, the, the influence of the approach that you've described has had not just upon people with disabilities themselves, but also upon that wider ecosystem of assistive and accessible technologies? Sure. Yeah, I mean, certainly we do know that the community of individuals with disabilities is a, a sizable one, you know, largest minority in the world with over 1 billion people in it. So um, there's a lot of people to support. But to your point, I think um, it's been really interesting to see how the work that we do funnels its way into other areas and people um, whether it be that people go in and find accessibility features and use them, even if they don't self-identify as having a disability, as a productivity feature, but also the ways that um, we as a company look at some of our accessibility features as foundational to other areas. I mean, when you, you think about um, things like CarPlay, where it's eyes-free use of, uh, of you know, the technology, because you don't want to take your, your eyes off the, the road. Um, all, all of our work that we've done around support for individuals in the blind community gives us a knowledge of how do you set up that UI? How do you make that a simple and intuitive process mm. if you're not looking at the screen? Um, so I think there's, you know, there's uh, many different ways that our accessibility features end up having um, an effect on what we do in other areas, as well as just becoming great tools in the toolkit for any user of our technology. I mean, I, I always say, you know, regardless of, of who you are and what you consider to be your personal needs, go into the accessibility settings and check out some of the things that are in there. I mean, I've never 
done a, a workshop or talked to somebody about the features that are in there that by the end of it, someone hadn't turned on something and will keep it on from that point forward because they just see it as something that helps them use the device a little bit better. And I, th I think, and it's really interesting what you're saying, you, and you used a word there which I think has been really important, which is intuitive. And certainly uh, where I've been mm -hmm. introducing things like iPads to people with cognitive disabilities or learning disabilities, or for people who are aging and older, that intuitive interface has been really important. It's given them a digital access that maybe before would have been very challenging. And I just wondered what you feel we've learned from this process. If you look back over those years, beyond that, what do you feel we've learned from that experience? David, I, I lost your audio. Oh, sorry, it's probably me not holding my microphone up high enough. Um, so I'm just interested in what you feel we've learned from the experience of the last 10 years or so. Um, uh, well, I think one of the, the big things that we've learned or, or tried to, to show people in the world um, is that accessibility can be done. And it's also some of the most creative work that you can do. Uh, you know, in order to really serve each community in the way that it should be, it's important to really step outside of, of what we're, you know, what the technology can do today and figure out what it can do tomorrow. Mm. And, you know, I, I feel incredibly honored to work with the team that I do. Our engineers are just constantly pushing the limits um, and, and really some of the most creative people I've ever met. And I think that that's, you know, that's huge. Accessibility is something that, that you know, can be done by any company. Just get into it early and often. You know, make sure that in your innovation process, it's not a checkbox, it's not an afterthought. You really have to engage your accessibility team or, you know, if it's a smaller company that doesn't have a, a team established, just establish a person who becomes the person who from day one is thinking about how would someone use this, whatever it is, if they weren't able to see it, if they weren't going to touch it, um, if they weren't going to hear it, whatever it might be, you need to think about it right up front. You need to include it in your process and really be thoughtful for each of these communities. And then, and then have fun. Yeah. You know, I think accessibility work is incredibly fun. And as I said, incredibly creative and lean into that. It should be a, the core of your design process and, and really just, just have fun with it. And, and I think that, that, that that's quite a, a nice message. And one of the things that we talked about a little bit here uh, yesterday, we were saying that you know, we should welcome and value the work that has been done to date. And as a community, we should take pride in our influence on that technology development. Um, but also, we shouldn't be scared of challenging and demanding and wanting more from our technology to support access and inclusion. And, and so thinking about that, for Apple, looking forward, where, where does our strategy take us for Apple, do you think? Yeah, well, I think uh, for us, you know, we, uh, for us, it's really, it's going to be a part of wherever technology takes us into the future. I, you know, accessibility is never done. And um, with every year, we continue to build out more and more new features. Um, as we look at potentially making new products, making sure that accessibility is a part of that, you know, I think there's such incredible strides we're already taking in in a lot of different areas. Uh, you know, a lot of of, of the, the baseline of who can use our products is already established, but we're always looking to expand the the depth and breadth of users who can use our technology. So we're constantly looking at how do we, um, expand the the audience that we have and and with that we're seeing you know really great strides in things like machine learning um, we've been using machine learning to uh, sort of expand a lot of what we're doing for many different types of user mm -hmm. groups whether that be um, things like what I talked about with people detection in uh, for the blind and low vision community 
sound recognition for the deaf and hard of hearing community, all the things we're doing with assistive touch for Apple Watch, for physical motor limitations, you know, so many things out there that um, we continue to expand upon. And so I think there's, you know, the sky's the limit. It, it's both kind of, as I was saying earlier, it's not only taking what are all of the amazing things that Apple is is looking to build into the future and making sure those work for our communities, but also looking at what are the just, you know, mind blowingly new ways that we can um, take all of that and turn them into really um, fantastic features with rich detail for our own uh, communities. And if you had to sum up all of that and everything we've discussed into a few words for the audience, how would you summarize how you feel and the direction we're going in? Yeah, well, um, you know, I, I feel really positive about all of this. I think that, you know, accessibility is so much a part of who we are as a company that um, that's just something I want I want people to be aware of. I want more people to to know that accessibility is built right in and that the device that they've likely been carrying around in their pocket for years may well be the most accessible piece of technology that they they have. And if they're not taking advantage of that, they certainly should be. It's a great message. Check what's in your pocket. It might have more than you thought it had. Sarah, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you have a great time. I have a great day left over there in the States and look forward to seeing you here at the Zero Project next year, I hope. Absolutely. Thank you very much, David. It's been a pleasure. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.